today. From Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, this is the National Football League. We'll see Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles taking on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly as they get ready to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. The Florida Atlantic man, Greg Joseph, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Philly's offense getting ready, and Jalen Hurts ready to lead them. The second-round pick who started his career at Alabama then finished with an electric senior season at Oklahoma. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. 57. On first and 10, it's Hurts. He'll buy some time right. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Second and eight. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 11 yards there. First down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Tag! Hawk 70! Hawk 70! Watch 54. So don't say nothing. Right back to Sanders on first down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. You remember me? Let's go, baby. Watch Twitch. 
Ertz sets up to throw it. Catch made by Fulgham. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he connects with Hurts. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, stepping back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Hey, check Mike 57. They go back to the ground with Sanders. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. A solid run on first down. Gain of 7 leaves him with a second and 3. Pretty effective run there. And now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality. And pound the rock. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Hey, watch the lane. Hey, watch Sam, watch Sam. Check, check, go. Go. They'll run, it's Sanders. And only about a yard there as he takes it from the nine to the eight. The good run on first down followed up by a not so good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're gonna stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. From eight yards out. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. Walking into the stadium, we saw a ton of people donning the jerseys of this rookie quarterback, so you know they love that opening drive, and he throws a touchdown pass. He gave a little bit of confirmation about what they had hoped, right? Because they thought they had a quarterback. They're thinking they have a quarterback. You do this, they believe they've got a quarterback. Look up elbowing each other up in the stands. That's our guy. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, and the Eagles lead at 7 zip. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Now K.J. Osborne. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here. Leadership skills apparent early in his life, carried over not just in high school but in college where he was a three-time captain of the Michigan State Spartans and learned the art of the comeback early in his career there and actually capped off his career with a big comeback in a bowl game before going off to the NFL. On first and 10, Cousins. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked, but instead they'll keep it on second down. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Dalvin Cook is running back, the intended target. But now it's third down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. 
So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He's going to get this one down to Cook. Oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. A short gain that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven-zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big-time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On first and 10, it's Sanders. He finds an opening past the 40, and he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 46. Here's Hertz to throw. And that is incomplete here. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing his hurts. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. We all nil. Safe, safe, safe. Hurts. He may try and run for this. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On the draw, here's Sanders. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Man, I got you. Man, I got you. He'll drop to throw. That's complete to Ward. 
And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 18. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now a carry for Sanders. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Second down, here's Hurts. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there the eagles on third down a perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going this is third and 11. from the shotgun he'll look to throw he's going to drop this down to sanders and he is going to be stopped at the 12 short of the first down they do get seven out of that but not enough to prevent a fourth down he felt the pressure coming there that was a good job of just making something out of nothing so to speak yeah it took the hit and still made the play you know when we talk about runners all right and on running plays Runs after contact, we call that getting dirty yards, tough, gritty ones. To me, that's like the version of a dirty pass. He knows he's going to get smacked, yet still delivers the football and picks up good yardage. So on comes the Eagle kicker, Jake Elliott, on fourth down. The kick by Elliott is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Yeah, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> he was trying to find Justin Jefferson there, but it'll be second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. 57 to Mike. Don't get nervous. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. On third down, Cousins, and he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. 
two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Now back to work for Miles Sanders in the Philly offense. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll complete this one to Fulgham. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. Now the second down throw on target. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll look to throw for it on third and one, and that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. He's been the forgotten man in this first half. Not a guy you want to forget. Not only his first catch, first time they've targeted him. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Not because at all. those are the types of plays that he provides. When he does come alive, when they do look his way, not only is it a big catch, it's a first down. A first and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Wide open receiver complete, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. B.C. Johnson, 31 yards, and the Vikings have made this now a one-score game. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, 
take that good feeling and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. And a lot of football, full half to be played. Point after, right down the middle. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Takes it at the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there, that can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. Out to his left. He's going to take off with it. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and give the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Got a man. He finds Sanders. And he is going to have an Eagles first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. But first down, Hurts. This ball complete to Rager. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off at the 23. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Tackle by Avante Maddox. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. 
As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw Miles Sanders strut his stuff in that first half. His guys lead, though by only a field goal, still anybody's game, as we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. This will make it into the end zone, and this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. We have not seen much on offense from either side. These last few drives, it has been a struggle, hasn't it? Totally, and you're thinking to yourself right now, if you're on offense trying to get things figured out, okay, we self-scout every week in our game plan. How many things do we do at certain times? What are our tendencies? Time to go to some of those tendency breakers and try and create some offense. They always have those in their back pocket, don't they? You have to, and if you don't keep abreast of what you're doing, you lock into a rhythm and make it easy for the opposition. Looking for tendency breakers right now. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Cousins now. That one into the hands of Thielen complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Cousins gives way to Cook, and he'll get this down only to about the 46. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he's going to take this close to the first down marker as he stopped at the Eagles' 38. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And it's a fake here on fourth and inches. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. Anxious moments there on the fake, but they do get just enough to pick up the first down. I'm not sure that the surprise was that they actually faked it. That's classic territory to go ahead and do it. The surprise to me is that they were successful. I'm not sure the defense was really prepared. And now they're going to keep the drive alive here. Really big play on the fake punt. Cousins on first down. 
He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively, but they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Cousins now to throw on first down. Over the middle to Smith. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. They've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings have taken the lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. And that makes it 14-10. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Ertz sets up to throw it. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And out across midfield, down to the 45. 22 yards there, a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Off the play fake, here's Hertz. That'll be caught, Rager with it. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. The catch and run pays off to the tune of 35 yards. I think this defense was still trying to recover from that last play, so you wonder if they were ready for this one. You have to imagine their defensive coaches are yelling at them to get focused, because if they don't, more plays like that will result in giving up points. Hey. 
So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Play action. Here's Hertz. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Jalen Rager was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. So much for the best laid plans and best design plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and 10. Here I come again. Here I come again. From the gun, it's Hurts. Looking for Rager again. This time he's got him. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The Eagles on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and four. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Travis Fulgham. There to make the grab. And once again, the Eagles are back out in front. Those are the types of plays in these moments they were hoping for from this young rookie, able to put him up here in the fourth quarter. How about the kid? You just mentioned it. The fourth quarter. This is when you have to make those winning plays. That's what he just did. Doesn't ensure anything, but he certainly gave his team a heck of a chance, didn't he? And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now 17-14. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Here's Osborne. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And now it's second down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Working out of the gun, Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big, but in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. Here it's third and two. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Let's go. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll result in a fresh set of downs. 
third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Just like that. Just like that. Cousins setting up the screen for Cook. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. Well, plays like that, Charles, no doubt. They're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well, but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They've got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. From the gun, here's Cousins. Over the middle, complete. That's Smith. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Back to the ground, Cook. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Brandon, unfortunately, I've been here before. They've had two opportunities to stop them, so this is demoralizing. They haven't gotten it done. Now you're calling all your blitzes, all your attack defenses, but you're not worried about playing your normal position. You're going to take chances now. Well, you said it. Two third down opportunities to get off the field. Couldn't do it, and the clock continues to roll. On first and 10, Cousins. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was a type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And Cook has it, left side. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. There we go. Eagles set and ready for their next offensive drive. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. And he'll throw right away. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. 
Here's Hurts to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Oh, the return is Osborne. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So Cousins and the Vikings down 17-14. A minute 52 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. He's back to throw. Looking sideline incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him, all focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. to throw throwing over the middle and it's incomplete out of the backfield he was trying to get that to Alexander Madison but it's going to be second down you can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield but they had nothing working in the secondary so he dropped it off to the running back that one ended up incomplete an incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25 back to throw that's complete to the receiver, Thielen. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Cousins to throw. He'll get this underneath to Madison. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Back to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
But he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Now Cousins, and he's got it, and just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Only three yards there on the completion. That'll lead to a third and goal. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Joseph now to add the PAT. It's up and good to make it 21-17. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. So now it's the Eagles' turn, trailing by four. A little over 30 seconds remaining. And they've got to travel the full 75 yards, and time is obviously a huge factor here. First and 10. 57 is the mic. Watch the but first down, Hurts. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. After the sack here, second and 11. Hey, check Mike 57. Mike 57. Oh. Right down. There you go. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Back to back, big plays defensively. First the sack. Now they force the incompletion on third and long. Things looking pretty good for them. And this is where they have to be careful because they've got the momentum going their way. They will be really amped up to get to the quarterback. Look out, draw, screen, something that can be used against them. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. He'll get this to Ward. And he's going to come up a bit short. He needed to get to the 35 for the first, but he only makes it to the 34.
Down four late. Got to go for it here on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings.